Hello and welcome to this video on finding the equations of tangents to circles. And what I mean by that is if you have a circle and you have a specified point, we want to find the equation of the tangent to this circle. Remember that a tangent is a straight line that touches the circle. So I've got this example here. We've got the point A512. So let's just say that this is the point A512 lies on a circle with equation x squared plus y squared equals 169. Now usually in exam questions they draw the circle for you, they draw the diagram, but in a previous video I explore how you can draw a circle given its equation. And basically if you have an equation in the form x squared plus y squared equals some number squared, if you square root that number that gives you the radius of the circle. So the square root of 169 is 13, so that means the radius is 13, that distance is 13, that distance is 13, that distance is 13, and that distance is 13. And that circle will be centered at the origin. So we want to find the equation of this line here. Now it's a very, very much set strategy for this. Firstly, do you remember that circle theorem that says the radius of a circle is at right angles, is perpendicular to the tangent? Now if we found the gradient of this radius here, that means we could work out the gradient of a perpendicular line. So let's find the gradient of this radius first. We know that gradient, so the gradient of the radius, I just write MR, is equal to change in Y over a change in X when we have two points. So we've got two points on this line here. We've got 0, 0, which is the origin, and we've got 5, 12. So what's the change in Y from here to here? Well, 0 to 12 is 12. And what's the change in X? Well, 0 to 5 is 5. And that means the gradient of this line here, the radius, is 12 over 5, if I draw that in. Now we know if we want to find the gradient of a line perpendicular to that, we just use the negative reciprocal. So the gradient of the tangent, I'll just write mt, is the negative reciprocal of that. So remember we negate it, so it's minus if it was positive before, and we reciprocate it. That means to do 1 over it, which if it's a fraction, flips it upside down. So it's minus 5 over 12. So we know the gradient of this tangent is minus 5 over 12. At this, we've got the gradient of this line and we've got a point on the line. So we know from previous videos how to find the equation of that line. So let's just summarize what we have. We know that m is minus 5 twelfths and it passes through this tangent 5 twelfths. So this is the tangent. So do you remember what we do first? If we know what m is, we can write y equals mx plus c. That's the general equation of a straight line. We know the m in this case, but we don't yet know what the y-intercept is. And do you remember, if a point lies on a line, then it satisfies its equation. And that means we can substitute these values in here, and that will allow us to find c. So if we sub in the y is 12, 12 is equal to minus 5 twelfths times x, which is 5 plus c. Now usually with these questions you find you have to do a bit of fractional manipulation. So let's simplify this. 12 is equal to, well if we write that 5 as 5 over 1, then we can see we've got minus 25, 5 times 5, over 12 plus c. Now we've got to find c, so we just add 25 over 12 to both sides. So C is equal to 12 plus 25 over 12. Now we could write 12 as 144 over 12 because that allows us to then add these fractions together. And when we do, we get 169 over 12 and we're done. We've got the equation of our tangent. So Y is equal to MX, so MX plus C, so our plus 169 over 12. And let's just check our answer is sensible. Uh, we've got a negative gradient, that makes sense because the line is going downhill, and we've got a positive y-intercept, and indeed that y-intercept is going to be positive. Right, let's try another example. We've got the point B3K lies on the circle of equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. Now if the circle wasn't drawn for you, Remember, you can just square root that number there to get the radius of the circle. So it goes through all the fives. So five, minus five, five, minus five. Let's draw that circle. 
and the point 3k lies on that circle. So 5 is there, 3 is there, so it's 3k. Now, we can actually work out what k is, because if you think about it, if this point lies on the line with this equation, then it must satisfy this equation. So if we substitute in, we can write x squared, i.e. 3 squared, plus the y squared, so k squared, is equal to 25. So we just substituted 3 in as x and k in as y, and then k squared is 25 minus 9, which is 16, so k is equal to 4. So we now know that this point is 3, 4, and we can do exactly what we did before. The tangent to the circle at B, so this is the point B, and the tangent here, and it intersects the x-axis at C. So it intersects the x-axis at this point C here. We want to determine the area of the triangle OBC. Now remember O is the origin, so we want to find the area of this triangle here OBC. Now we should probably find the equation of this line first, shouldn't we? And then we can reason about what this x-intercept is going to be, and then we can reason about what the area is going to be. So let's find the equation first. We do exactly what we did before. The gradient of the radius, so this gradient here, that's a change in y, so 0 to 4 is 4, over the change in x, 0 to 3 is 3, and that's the gradient of the radius, and therefore the gradient of the tangent, because this tangent is at right angles to the radius. We know we use a negative reciprocal, so it's going to be negative again, minus 3 over 4. And then we therefore know, because it goes through that point and has this gradient here, we can write y equals m, we are using this m, x plus c. And then we're going to substitute 3, 4 into that, because we know this point lies on this line. It lies on this tangent. So we've got y, 4, is equal to minus 3 quarters times x, which is 3, plus c. And then if we just use a calculator this time, we get c is equal to 4 plus 9 over 4, which is equal to 25 over 4. So we know the equation of the tangent is y is equal to minus 3 quarters x plus c, the 25 over 4. Now, we've got this equation. How do we find the x-intercept? Well, we saw that in previous videos. Can you see when we're on this line and we're on the x-intercept, the y value is zero? So if you just make y equal to zero, then zero is equal to minus three quarters x plus 25 over four. And that means if you add three quarters x to both sides, that gives you three quarters x is equal to 25 over 4. We can multiply both sides by 4, so we get 3x is equal to 25, and that means that x is equal to 25 over 3. So if we put that on here, we know the x value here is 25 over 3, and then we want to find the area of this triangle. So now the area of the triangle is just half times the base times the height. So we're going to do half times, well, why don't we make this the base here, and then the perpendicular height would be that, wouldn't it? Now we know what the length of the base is, because that x value is 0, that x value is 25 over 3. So it's half times 25 over 3 times the perpendicular height. And can you see that height is just the y value at this point, which is just 4. So we times it by the 4, and I'm just going to do that on my calculator, is 50 over 3. And that is the final answer. Let's do this final test your understanding question. We've got here, determine the equation of the tangent to the circle with equation x squared plus y squared equals 100 at the point minus 6h. You may want to pause the video here to have a go at that question. All right, let's do it. So if the circle wasn't sketched for you, do you remember that we can just square root that number there to get the radius? So the square root of 100 is 10. So we know that this circle goes through the tens. And then we want the tangent to the circle at the point minus 6, 8. So let's draw it on the diagram. Minus 6, 8. It's roughly here. And we've got the tangent there. Yep. So whatever that y-intercept is, we expect to be just slightly more than 10 if we've got it right. Let's do the usual approach. We draw in the radius. 
and that's the point zero zero there. So we start by finding the gradient of the radius and we can see it's going to be a negative number. So it's a change in y over the change in x. Let's say we're going from 0, 0 to minus 6, 8. The change in y, 0 to 8, is 8. The change in x, 0 to minus 6, is minus 6. And if we just simplify that, we get minus 4 over 3. And that means if that gradient is minus 4 over 3, the gradient of the tangent will be the negative reciprocal. So the gradient of the tangent is negative, so it becomes positive, and it's reciprocal. It flips it, 3 over 4. And now we know the equation of this so far is y equals mx plus c. We know the m, but we don't know the c. And then we know it passes through the point minus 6, 8. So we can substitute that in. So minus 6, 8, that's the x value, that's the y value. So y, i.e. 8, is equal to 3 quarters times x, which is 3 quarters of minus 6 plus c. Now if we just simplify that, we have 8 is equal to minus 9 over 2 plus c. And then we just have to add 9 over 2 to both sides. So that's 16 over 2 plus the 9 over 2 is 25 over 2. So c is 25 over 2. And then we've got our full equation. We've got the c, we've got the m. So y is equal to 3 quarters x plus C. And let's just check it looks sensible. Three quarters, that's a positive gradient, that looks feasible. And we also have that the y-intercept is 12.5. 25 over 2 is 12.5. And that looks about right, because 12.5 is just above that y-intercept of 10 on the circle there. So well done if you got that right.